Grandmasters are finally upon us here in Destiny 2, and Strand makes GMs ridiculously easier with so much field control due to suspending targets in the air. What's up guys, Reckless here, and welcome back to another video. Today, we will be going over Strand builds for both PvE and PvP for the Titan. I actually thought it felt weird jumping back on a Warlock after such a long time, but a Titan? Oh my god. Playing a Titan again feels so foreign to me, but with Strand, it feels so good at the same time. Not gonna lie, I think the last time I actually used a Titan on a daily basis, and this is not including like the campaign, dungeons, and raids, was like when the Armamentarium was released in Destiny 2. What was that, like season three of D2? However, Strand has changed that and it has made Titans one of my most favorite classes to actually play with. If you guys want to go ahead and check out the Hunter and Warlock Strand builds that I have previously made, I will put them at the end of this video as well as in the description box below. Titan mains, you are going to love me. I promise this after today, I'm going to show you how to potentially get three orbs of power on one kill. Granted, there is a little prep work, but we'll get there. Let's go ahead and start with the artifact. So, in the first column, we are running anti-barrier pulse rifle, unstoppable scout rifle, as well as overloaded uh, auto SMG. Then in the next column, we have multi-siphon mods, authorized mods grenades, authorized mods strand, untangler, uh, counter weave, allied unraveling, bricks from beyond, Threaded Blast, as well as Prismatic Transfer. When it comes to the subclass, unfortunately, the only one we can use is Blade of Fury. So, that's pretty much what we're going to run. As for our abilities, we're using Rally Barricade, which you create a small barrier that you can peek over while aiming down sights, and that increases weapon reload speed, stability, and range when you stand behind it. Then we have Strafe Lift, which jump while airborne to activate lift and launch into the air, with strong directional control. Then we have Frenzied Blade, which you activate your charged melee ability to dash forward, slashing at targets in front of you and severing them. And then last but not least, we have Shackle Grenade, which you throw a weapon of weighted strand matter that detonates on impact suspending targets and creating additional suspending sub projectiles. As for our aspects, we are using Into the Fray, which destroying a tangle or casting your super grants woven mail for nearby allies. While you have woven mail, your melee regeneration rate is increased. And then we have uh, Drenger's Lash, which activate your class ability to create a ripple in reality that travels forward along the ground, suspending and damaging targets it hits. As for our fragments, the first one we're going to use is Threader Generation, which dealing damage generates grenade energy, and this gives you a negative 10 to discipline. Then we are using Threat of Isolation, which landing rapid precision hits emits a severing burst from the target. Then we're using Threat of Mind, which defeating suspended targets grants class ability energy. And then last but not least, we are using Thread of Wisdom, which defeating suspended targets with precision final blows creates an orb of power. Now as for the weapons, when it comes to this build, we will be using Quicksilver Storm, and once you get the catalyst on this, it does go ahead and make the Quicksilver Storm a strand weapon. So final blows with grenades uh, from this weapon create tangles, which is amazing. But then we also have uh, the perks on it, which one of them is Grenade Chaser, which landing multiple rockets loads a grenade and then press whatever button, long press to switch into grenade launcher mode. This thing is amazing. I love using this, especially on the Titan with this build. Next, I'm also using Prodigal Return, which this also has disorienting grenades, Envious Assassin, as well as Volt Shot. And then for my heavy, I like to use Roar of the Bear. This one specifically has Tracking Module, Vorpal Weapon, and Soaking Wolf. Now, when it comes to GMs, your heavy is always going to change. You're never going to use the same heavy ever. So that's always going to be dictated upon what the GM is and then what the burn is as well. As for our exotic, we will be using Ambient Leap, and the perk on this is called Puppeteer's Control, which Dranger's Last spawns two additional projectiles, tracks targets more aggressively, and travels farther. 
gain woven mail when suspending targets. Now, it does not matter how you suspend targets, you will always gain woven mail when a target is suspended. For our helmets, we are going to use a single strand siphon, which rapid strand weapon final blows create orbs of power, as well as heavy ammo finder, which increases the drop rate of heavy ammo on a kill. And then we also use in powerful friends, which collecting an orb of power causes nearby allies to increase their current armor charge by one. For our gauntlets, we are using double bolstering detonation, which grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade. And then we are also using a single grenade kickstart, which when your grenade energy is fully expended, you gain grenade energy. Additionally, your armor charge is consumed and you gain additional grenade energy for each stack. Now, with this build, we are actually going to go ahead and focus on our class ability and not the grenades. And if we're doing stuff like GMs, you will be suspending champions in the air a lot and you will be getting your grenade a lot faster thanks to the wonderful fragment um, Thread of Generation. As for our chest, we are running Emergency Reinforcements, which when your shield becomes broken, you gain temporary damage reduction, which is this is actually going to be huge when it comes to this build. And then we also use an A single charged up, which increased the maximum number of stacks of armor charge you can carry by one. As you guys know, for our exotic, we are using Ambient Leap, and we are using a single better already, which your health begins to regenerate immediately after picking up an orb of power. And then we are using a single innervation, which reduces grenade um, cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. And then last but not least, we're using stacks on stacks, which picking up a orb of power grants you additional stack of armor charge. And then for our class item, we are using Reaper, which after using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. We're using healthy finisher, which uh, finishers heal you. And then last but not least, we're using a single utility kickstart, which when your class ability energy is fully expended, you gain class ability energy. Now, with Reaper, Strand Siphon, as well as Thread of Wisdom, those are your three options in order to get Orbs of Power. And once you get multi-kills and then go ahead and pop your class ability, you do have a chance to actually get three orbs on one kill. When it comes to PvP, this build is good in pretty much everything that you do. It's good in the Vanguard and Gambit playlist, it's good in Grandmasters, it's good in Dungeons, Raids, Lost Sectors, you name it. Your main focus is to suspend targets and get precision shots and kills. After you get at least two kills, then suspend an enemy with your Rally Barricade on that enemy with a precision kill, you can actually get three orbs of power as a drop as you see in this clip right here. You're gonna regen your ability so fast with this build, it doesn't need things like Bomber on the class item or even fragments like Thread of Warding because anytime you suspend something, you will be given Woven Mail due to Abeyant Leap. After making this build, I actually took it into the Grandmaster that you are currently watching and we literally had no problems. Now, let's go over some of the changes for PvP. So. The super is going to remain the same. When it comes to abilities, I do use Towering Barricade, which create a large barrier that can be used to reinforce a position with cover from enemy fire. I use Strafe Lift, Frenzied Blade, and then I also use Shackle Grenades for this as well. Coming down to the fragments, I do use Threat of Generation, which dealing damage generates grenade energy. Then I use Threat of Isolation, which landing rapid precision hits emits a severing burst from the target. Then I also use Threat of Ascent, which activating your grenade ability reloads your equipped weapon and grants bonus airborne effectiveness and handling for a short duration. And this gives you plus 10 mobility. And then last but not least, I'm using Threat of Finality just specifically for the plus 10 to recovery and it has nothing to do with finishing because you can't finish anything inside PvP. 
As for the weapons, I am using the Immortal Adept. Yes, I understand, not everyone has an Immortal Adept. However, later on, I will go over a few alternatives that you can use instead of the Immortal Adept. But yes, mine does have Rangefinder and Target Lock. No, I'm not flexing, especially not the 1400 kills that's on it. Uh, <laughs> next, we have the Matador. Mine specifically has Perpetual Motion and Killing Wind. And then last but not least, if you know me, you know I love swords in PvP. Um, I'm using a half truce with Eager Edge. For our exotic, we are still using Abiant Leap. As for the helmet, we are going to run with Double Strand Siphon, which Rapid Strand Weapon Final Blows create an orb of power. And then we are also still using uh, Powerful Friends. As for our gauntlets, we are still using Double uh, Bolstering Detonation, which grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade. And then we also still using Grenade Kickstart, uh, which when your grenade energy is fully expended, you gain grenade energy. On our chest, I am using a single unflinching strand aim, which reduces flinching from incoming fire while aiming a strand weapon. I am also using Sniper Damage Resistance, which reduces incoming damage from combatants that are at long range. This works great in PvP even when you have 100 resilience, I, I swear everyone should be using this in PvP. Then we're also using Charged Up, which increases the maximum number of stacks of armor charge you can carry by one. On our boots, we are using the single better already, as well as Innervation, as well as Stacks on Stacks. And then in our class item, we are going to go ahead and run a single bomber, which reduces grenade energy when using your class ability. So you get more damage done in PVE because you have more targets than you do in PVP. So that's why we are using that single bomber. We are using Reaper, which after using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. And then last but not least, we will be using Utility Kickstart, uh, which when your class ability energy is fully expended, you gain class ability energy. Now, in PvP, you want to make smart plays and smart pushes. Don't try to run and gun with this build. You will die regardless of whether you have an Immortal or not. When it comes to PvP, you want to go ahead and suspend as many opponents as you can and getting woven mail before actually pushing with any of the weapons that you actually have. Like I said, smart plays, smart pushes. Like I said earlier, I know not everyone is going to have an Immortal, let alone an Adept one, but there are other weapons that you can use in its place. One good weapon that is kicking ass and taking names in PvP, whether it be 6v6s or in comp, is Autumn Wind with Rangefinder and Headseeker, or Heating Up with Headseeker. Or, if you don't like Pulse Rifles, the new hand cannon Round Robin is destroying in PvP. I know, because I have been on the opposite end of it many times, and it's actually pissing me off and it makes me want to go ahead and make one myself. Or, if you want to get a little risky, you can use the Wave Splitter build, and after you pick up an orb, it can kill people a lot faster than somebody that has an Immortal, including an Immortal Adept. The right build with the Wave Splitter has a TTK of 0.49, and that is a lot faster um, TTK than an Immortal. All in all, just go ahead and play with what you enjoy. When it comes to your stats, you want to mainly focus on max resilience in order to get that 30% damage reduction, as well as discipline, given that this is strand. And then a lot of people after that go after recovery. Um, I would actually go after recovery as well, but unfortunately, because I don't play on my Titan a lot, my gear kind of gives me a lot of strength, but definitely resilience first. And then you can decide whether recovery or discipline is more important to you, but since it's strand, I personally feel that discipline is more important than recovery. However, at least have 40 recovery or higher. So this is the final video for the strand subclasses that I actually have made. The other two classes for strand will be at the end of this video. Let me know down in the comments what you did or did not like about these builds. If there is something that you would actually change or if you actually run the same build or a similar build to this one. And that, my friends, brings us to the end. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them.
Go. Go, 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 go.